first of all, you cannot make a pager explode just by burning up the battery. I mean, you, you might be able to do some damage to some people, but not much. So what we're dealing with here is the Israelis, no doubt the Israelis, got into the distribution network for these pagers and put plastic explosives in them. And it doesn't take much, 10 to 15 grams. Um, I've actually done, I filmed a sequence in a bedroom in Gaza once a couple of years ago where the Israelis killed Yahya Yesh, the Hamas um, bomber, with a telephone. And the way it worked was they gave the telephone to one of his cousins um, who was in the room with him and handed him the phone, said, hey, your father's on the phone. He wants to talk to you. As soon as Yahya Yash puts it to his ear, they exploded it remotely over a cell network. Now, pagers work off a radio network and they're one way, so they should be uh, safe in the, in, you know, and you can't trace them like you can a cell phone. I mean, with a, with a cell phone, I can tell you if I were doing a trace on it, exactly where you're sitting in which office. I could even turn your camera on so I could see you. Uh, but with pagers, they thought they were safe. But what they didn't manage to take care of is the distribution network. Um, you know, and it's and you just send out an encrypted signal to all these pagers, and bam, there they go. How long does it take to do something like this? Oh, man, I you know, it, 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 it's it's remarkable what the Israelis have done in Iran and Lebanon, and it's in you know, it's we we. We American intelligence use cell phones to track people, but their ability to get on the ground and insert uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of these pagers to Hezbollah is a remarkable operation, and it's probably been in the works for maybe years. I don't know. Well, it's certainly something that's got everyone's attention today, and so the idea of doing this if they were able to do this, there's this question about whether or not it would have been more valuable if they had access to these pagers to use them as tracking devices. Uh, well, that's the whole thing is if they're radio networks, they just receive, they don't transmit. I, I assume these are one-way uh, systems where they can just receive signals. So you can't really track them. Uh, our special forces use them where they'll carry pagers and then they're to use other communications if they have to call back in, but you really can't track them. Um, so, yeah, you know, and, and the question is, why did the Israelis do it right now? Is this part of a plan to go to Lebanon or, but Hezbollah is in trouble in the sense that their communications network has just been blown up. They can't use cell phones. They can't use pagers. Um, and, and JJ, my question is, why has Hezbollah got so sloppy? Did they not take apart these pagers and look inside of them to see the explosives? Because it's readily apparent if anybody with any expertise takes one of these pagers apart that they've manipulated. Um, that's, that's really my question is, you know, Hezbollah is not the organization it used to be. Yeah. All right. So um, that said, um, you believe that the, the network has been, well, they've said it themselves. This is the worst security breach ever. So you 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 feel that this could have a profound impact on the, the, the organization's ability to do what it does, right? Well, right now, if, I mean, they can go back to pagers, but they're going to have to get, they're going to have to redistribute them. You're going to have to, you know, it's going to take a while. Um, and if the Israelis are preparing to go into Lebanon in force, uh, they've just disabled their communications in a major way, and they've been weakened. And if I were looking at this from the Israeli point of view, I'd say, well, now is the time to hit them when they can't communicate. Very interesting, Robert Bayer. Um, so is there anything about this that I haven't asked you that you think is important? No, I think we've covered it. I mean, just look, you know, the, the Israelis are, they believe their survival's at stake and they'll go way beyond in terms of capabilities, in terms of risk of doing operations like this. Um, 
which we really can't do or we're not prepared to do. Um, you, you know, I think I think JJJ we have to look is is Netanyahu serious about removing Hezbollah as a threat? Because if he removes Hezbollah as a threat, it could call in, it could bring in the Iranians, and that the Iranians retaliate out of Yemen or wherever. We are getting closer, getting drawn into a major war in the Middle East, which could affect the elections. And that's what I think we should think about in, in our terms. So how would the U.S. be drawn in if is, Israel is trying to eliminate Hezbollah? Tell me, step me through how that would. Well, get let's say it. let's say the Iranians start firing directly from Iran. You, know, they feel compelled to, or Iraq, hypersonic missiles, and they start hitting Tel Aviv. Well, the Israelis are going to use whatever weapons they can back at Iran, and will that escalation? We'll just lose control of it, and it'll spread through the Gulf. If if you want to do damage, as I've been saying for years, to the United States or the, the world's economy in general, you hit Saudi oil facilities and they're all vulnerable as we know from the attack on Abcake in 2015. So that's one scenario. I mean, no one's planning for it now, um, but this conflict is constantly moving up to this, this point of escalation, which will become uncontrollable. 